I do a lot of building with um, guitar bodies and frequently you want to uh, not only have maybe inch and a half, inch and three quarter inch sock, um, but you also want to do double sided uh, milling. And so what I have here uh, is a waste board that I have clamped down um, so that I can actually drill uh, pins into it. But of course that also removes some of the Z clearance that you have. So I've upgraded to the HDZ, and I'm just gonna record for a little bit as I put this together, um, just so you can see how it's done, uh, and any pitfalls that, that I run into and how I solve them. Um, this video is not intended to be a replacement for um, whatever official instructions they have, um, just showing you how I did it. Uh, the box came, got some, some stickers, that's pretty cool. Um, Well packed, as I would expect. <laughs> More stickers. I tend not to be a sticker person, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll put them on the machine. Oh my god! So right off the bat, ooh, the box. Right off the bat, this thing is uh, considerably heavy. Um, I had to guess maybe seven pounds, maybe even 10 pounds. Um, and just for a point of comparison, my machine's off. Move this into the camera area a little bit better. Um, you can see that the HDZ is considerably larger. Um, if I put it end to end at the bottom, you can see you know, there's on a, an additional two inches perhaps. You know, I don't know what the official measurement is, but uh, it's considerably uh, taller. It's about the same width, and it's definitely, you know, quite a heavy piece of, of machinery. Um, so now if I look in the box, Okay, amazingly, there's no instructions. <sighs> okay, then. And one thing I can see here is, you know, there's six, there's six holes on the back um, that are, are clearly for uh, bolts. And of course, there's six holes here. And so I know that piece uh, is going to work. I guess I'll start off by taking off, or at least disconnecting these wires, taking off the original piece, taking out the router. Um, maybe this will get more obvious. So I've got the original piece taken off. Um, it's not hard to see that, you know, the holes are going to line up in the same place. In fact, it uh, looks like there's a hand, there's two, two areas down here for putting this over the bolts. And so in terms of aligning this up, um, it's actually pretty well aligned just off the bat. It'd be a bit easier if I had some of the help, but the hardest thing is just making sure that you get the bolt um, you know, properly aligned with the hole so that you don't cross thread it. 
first one in place. The rest of them should be easier now. There we go. For now, I'm not putting any thread locker on these. Um, once I'm sure that I set it up correctly, then I'll go ahead and, and put uh, thread locker on all the bolts. You know, one thing I noticed right off the bat here, I don't have my calipers nearby. Oh, there they are. Now this this screw is you know six tenths of an inch here. The original one is about thirty five, um, and so this is almost uh, twice the thickness as the original one. So I have to presume that's going to add you know some stability, uh, add to the weight uh, capabilities of this. Even though I'm putting the bigger um, Z uh, axis on right now. I am going to still use my original router. Uh, in the future, you know, I might, you know, upgrade to, you know, a bigger spindle or something. But for right now, I'm really just getting it um, for the vertical travel. Okay, so I have I have my six bolts in there. Um, I'm going to need to take this. Um, spindle holder off and reuse it. I think the biggest question here is really just figuring out um, how do I put the Z sensor uh, on the new, new machine, but hopefully that will become pretty obvious pretty soon. Jeez. So it looks like there's three holes on each side here. I guess depending on your spindle size, uh, you could put these higher or lower. Um, I'm gonna start with lower for now, just because, um, well, just because I don't think I need too much space actually. It actually might be four, so. Uh, either way, I'm going to put this uh, in the middle two holes um, or the bottom holes just so that I can, you know, put it in place. Once I actually put my spindle back on, then I can see if it's if it's right or not. It's probably the case that there's directions online for this. I uh, should have looked, but uh, it's kind of impatient one just to get started. Okay, so in the first one, if you have the, I think this is a 65 millimeter mount, um, if you look at it, the holes actually aren't um, perpendicular um, to the, the board. And so if I put the two in here, um, it does not fit. So, because the holes don't line up. So let me go back, try a different set of holes. Ah, you can see it now. So this bottom set of holes right here um, is actually offset a little bit in the same way um, that they are on this, this hole then. So um, third time here should be the charm. Yep, there you go. So the answer is for everybody who's reusing the original uh, 65 millimeter mount, you should use the bottom set of holes here and uh, everything fits in. So now I can put this back here. The way I used to try and get a few uh, extra inches or at least a little bit extra travel is I would put the, the spindle uh, higher inside the mount. Um, that does work. I presume it does add some uh, or takes away from some of the rigidity as, you know, the center of gravity now is a little bit higher and, you know, 
perhaps this could start tilting one way or the other, but it does work, but rather than ruin a bunch of material, I figured I might as well just go for the bigger one now. If I'm imagining this correctly, this is actually gonna go above here. So to get that much travel, I mean, that's, that's pretty considerable. So this wire, um, you know, there's one two by two connector here, so it shouldn't be too bad to connect that. So now the only thing left is figure out how the X or the, excuse me, the Z um, limit sensor um, is supposed to come off of here. And so, has a screw on the back. Let's take that off. Let's see if we can find, hopefully, a screw on that side that it obviously fits into. And sure enough, there's a hole. I'm off the camera now. There's there's a obvious hole that this is going to fit into, um, just like the last one. So this could be a pretty simple. Pretty simple swap over. Connect the wires back up. There you go. So the, the real time counter here on the, the video says it's been about 23 minutes. Um, so it's probably been 20 minutes or so uh, since I decided to try and put this on. Uh, I didn't use any instructions. It appears that everything has been swapped out the way it should be. Um, after I turn the camera off, I'm gonna go look online um, just to see if there's any instructions, see if something stood out that I should have done. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that um, I'm going to have to reinitialize the settings on my machine um, within uh, Carbide Motion. I'll do that. I won't do it on camera. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of, of swapping out this part, I mean, this is definitely a really robust part. Um, it's definitely going to give me a lot of additional clearance, so I don't have to worry about bumping up against the top of the Z uh, and losing steps that way. And uh, yeah, that's about it. But, you know, maybe I'll come back and do a video later after I review it. Um, but all in all, it's a pretty, pretty easy swap out. So thanks for watching. Uh, you know, nothing too exciting here, but uh, if you're thinking about swapping out uh, for the HD, HDZ, uh, then it's a pretty simple switch. Mm -hmm.